Good morning. Listen, isn't it so good to have such great music when we come in every Sunday morning? Uh, grateful that we have the trumpet this morning. I, I played the trumpet in high school in the band, but it never sounded like that. I don't know why. Well, we're so glad you're here this morning. If you have not picked up your journal yet, uh, if you're watching online and you haven't picked up your journal, we, we got more in, so you can swing by and grab one and uh, follow along with us in this series called Blazing New Trails. Uh, would you remember this morning also to fill out your communication card, drop it in the offering basket on your way out or online. I want to say a special hello to someone who watches us every single week. His name is Paxton. So would you say hello to Paxton with me? Just say hello, Paxton. And so we're so proud of him and so grateful that he and all of you watch us every single week. Let me pray for us and I invite you to stand and greet those around you. Father, thank you so much that we can gather in your house, that we can be inspired by beautiful music. We read your word and are encouraged and challenged, and we see one another and enjoy fellowship. But we've come to offer ourselves to you. So may you be glorified, may you be lifted up and honored as we worship you in this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Now stand and greet those around you if you would. strings. I have to tell you, Jacob actually played for our Christmas music, and I was talking to him about coming, and he emailed me, and he said, I'm ready. And so he's here, and then this is what I call the original string quartet, um, and the cellist and the two in the back were going to be in town this weekend, and so Catherine said, can we please play? I said, come on, the more the merrier. So we, you are in for a treat. We're going to sing an old hymn, probably on my list of favorites, it would be a long list. Oh God, our help in ages past. There's an interlude in between every verse so we can just enjoy our instruments this morning. We're gonna ask the women to sing verse three and the men to sing verse four, but everybody sings all the rest of the verses, okay? So let's stand, watch me, and you'll know when to come in for Oh God, our help in ages past.
absolutely beautiful. Would you join me in this uh, confession of our faith from the Korean Creed? We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. If you'll bow your heads, we'll go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the peace that we feel in our soul because we belong to you. God, we thank you for the peace that silence brings. Lord, we thank you for the peace that you offer to us in this world that sometimes is anything but peaceful. Oh God, would you lead us through our days that we might not reflect necessarily the ways we feel to the world, but the love we know to the world. You, Christ, may we reflect you to the world. Oh Lord, we pray for our church today. Lord, we pray that we would be a people, a body, who is committed and devoted to proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and nothing else. Lord, I pray that you would be with our leadership here, that you would give us the strength and the courage to take the steps that you are calling us to, whatever those may be. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be leaders in our families. Lord, for the spiritual head of the household, to be just that, to be a head to their household, to lead their family in what it, what it means to be a believer and a Christian and a faithful follower in relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh God, would you teach us how to do that, how to be different from what the culture is calling us to be. Lord, we pray today that you would Forgive us for the many ways that we fall short of your glory every single day. No, oh God, we take just these few minutes now to raise those things up before you this morning.
Lord, we thank you for grace and for mercy and for your love that meets us in repentance. God, that we are wiped clean because of the blood of Jesus Christ when we come to you and surrender ourselves. Oh God, I pray that you would work forgiveness out through our lives. Lord, that you would bring to mind people that maybe we need to go to or that need to come to us or that we might work out differences and we might be found in your favor, reconciled to each other and to you, Lord. We thank you for that. God, we pray for our community. Lord, I pray for our world. I pray that forgiveness would not just happen in the house of the Lord and in the body of Christ, but that somehow we as a people would learn how to forgive each other for whatever it is that's holding us back. Lord, we pray for leadership that guides us in the direction of building bridges and not walls. Lord, that's what we pray today. And help us be a part of building those bridges and tearing down walls. Lord, we thank you today for Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for our salvation. Thank you for Jesus. Lord, without him, we have nothing. We have nothing. And so, Lord, be with us today. We pray that you would lead us and guide us through this worship service today. Lord, we pray for those right now who are being hit by weather. Lord, that is, um, while we're down here sunny and warm, there are people who are not. So, Lord, we just pray for them right now. We pray your mercy on them. We ask that you would continue to bring healing to those who are physically sick, or that you would continue to give us discernment and wisdom and how to navigate the days in front of us. Lord, hear us now as we join our voices together and we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray so long ago when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We just want to thank y'all again as we start this new year for being an incredible church that is giving and loving in every way. There's a slide that'll come up that'll show you how you can continue to give online if you would like. There are uh, plates as you leave the sanctuary today. You can drop your offering off. We also encourage you, please fill out your communication card and drop it in the plate. It helps so much for me to be able to do my job uh, if y'all will just do that for us. So thank y'all very much for who you are and what you do. Any kids that want to go to children's church can leave right out this door.
already been blessed. We've been blessed beyond measure already. Thank you so much. Listen, if you have your journals, uh, would you turn to page 13? I want to go ahead and let you fill in the core value this week that we are learning from Christ for those uh, who are Christ followers. And here's the core value. Relationships will make you or break you. Isn't that true? They absolutely will. Here's the reality. Uh, we were meant, though, to be in relationships. They use solitary confinement in prison settings on purpose because of the pain that that inflicts when we're separated from others. But here's the other thing we know about relationships. Relationships are hard, aren't they? You know, this core value speaks truth. The relationships in your lives will absolutely make you or break you. They can lift you up or they can tear you down. The relationships you have can encourage you. They can discourage you. They can enhance your life or they can devalue your life also. That's no wonder then that Andy Stanley said this about the relationships that we have, particularly friends. He says your friends will determine the direction and the quality of your life. In other words, they're going to make you or they're going to break you. Well, the truth is we can't control other people no matter how hard we try. We can't force them to learn these core values that you and I are learning over these weeks or to apply them in their lives. But we can make sure that we are applying them when it comes to relationships. So here's where Jesus is going today. The key component that he wants us to know from the Sermon on the Mount when it has to do with relationships is this. It's forgiveness. Forgiveness. There's a reason the music was about forgiveness. There's a reason Jamie prayed about forgiveness because the Word of God for us today is about forgiveness. Would you look up with me in your Bibles, Matthew chapter 6. We're working from the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. It's just two verses. It's verse 14 and 15. And so I'll invite you to stand as we share God's word together. And would you read this one out loud with me as we've been doing? Let's read it together. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Now, you might want to do what I've done in my Bible. I underline words that stand out. And so the words that stood out for me from this passage would be if, I would underline or circle if. There are two ifs in these passages. That's significant. I would underline the word forgive. I would underline the word refuse. And then I would underline the word not. And, and those words stand out because here's what Jesus understood. Jesus knew that there would be conflict in relationships. He understands that we live in a broken world and that we are in a constant battle at times with our own sin nature. And so there are times when we offend others and there are times when we've been offended by others. And the impact of this reality of conflict in relationships is significant. In fact, I want you to write down this passage because you'll want to go look at it later. It's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. And then look what I've put there in the quotes. Would you, would you write beside that uh, scripture reference, write locked gates, locked gates. And when you go back and read this Proverbs, maybe later today, here's what you're going to hear, something like this, that it's really hard to win back someone who has been offended it's just hard to do. In fact, it'll tell you this. It'll say things like this. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. Now, you probably have experienced that sometime in your life. Maybe right now you're going through something like that in your relationships. Well, I wish it was simple and we could resolve this without much trouble, but sometimes that's not so easy. But there's some parents that have multiple kids that have seen this 
live out in real time, right? I, I, was, uh, I was interested to see that there's a creative way some parents are using to try to teach this principle to their children. In fact, our daughter-in-law, Gina, used it with our two older granddaughters. Let's, let, let me let you watch this little video. What are you wearing? Oh, a get-along. A daddy shirt. And what is it called? A get-along shirt. And why are you wearing a get-along shirt? Because we fight. <laughs> and whoever wears the mark gets it. Oh. All right. Is it, is it harder to fight when you're wearing a get-along no, shirt? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, you know, I don't think Jesus had that exactly in mind when he was uh, teaching the Sermon on the Mount, but everybody needs a get-along shirt. <laughs> but it's not necessarily that simple. You know, Jesus knew the power of relationships, and he also understood the importance of forgiveness. So here's the question I start with. How good are you at living out this core value? How good are you at forgiving? Well, to live it out, here, there are a couple of things I want to share with you that we need to do. Here's the first thing. We, we need to consider the temperature of our hearts. And here's, here's what I mean by that. Where, where is your heart when it comes to forgiveness? Is your heart cold? Is it warm? Is it hot? And you're, you're ready to forgive when the time comes? Because here's the reality. If we struggle with forgiveness... That's a reflection of where our heart is. Not only where our heart is with others, but it's also a reflection on where our heart is with Christ. Forgiveness was at the heart of his message, wasn't it? And his mission for coming to earth. In fact, forgiveness, if you think about it, it's really at the core of Christianity. It's about God's willingness to forgive us and the price that he was willing to pay so that we might be forgiven. And when we fail to forgive others, Jesus is suggesting here, then, then it's a reflection that we're not grateful and we do not appreciate what God has done for us. But there's a bigger consequence that Jesus highlights in this teaching today. I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but it says something like this, that if we aren't willing to forgive others, then God's not willing to forgive us. In fact, I wanted to go back to the scripture and make it personal. I want to read it this way. If I forgive those who sin against me, my heavenly Father will forgive me. But if I refuse to forgive others, my Father will not forgive my sins. And I read that in those terms, and I think, well, wait a minute, Jimmy, are you saying that my salvation in some way is tied to this concept of forgiveness, this core value. And, and I'd have to say, it, it's got to be according to what Jesus said. You know, it, it makes sense because my unwillingness to forgive reflects where my heart is with Christ right now. And so, yeah, there's significance here when Jesus says, if you don't forgive those that have offended you, then your Father in heaven will not forgive you. You know, we all should appreciate that we've been forgiven, shouldn't we? I mean, we should be so grateful every single day that God has forgiven us of our sins. Because if you've ever felt the weight of sin, if you've ever been in a position where you couldn't sleep because of something you did or what you did is always on your mind, then, then you understand what it feels like to be there. But if you've also confessed that sin and repented, then you know you felt the joy of being forgiven by our Father in heaven. David wrote about this in Psalm 32. So I've got to look up verse for you right now. Go, go with me, if you would, please, to Psalm 32. The Old Testament, kind of near the center of the Bible, Psalm 32. And, and I want you to pay attention to what David wrote because he's talking about his time when he had committed this terrible, terrible sin that we know about with Bathsheba and her husband that he had killed. And, and you'll see he was, this, this was weighing on him over and over. And you'll see in verses 3 and 4 what he says about that. Look what, look what it says. He says, when I refused to confess my sins, my body wasted away. 
And I groaned all day long, day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Now you can just, you can sense the weight of that on David. But what you can't miss are verses one and two. Look what it says. It says, oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. So once he confessed it, he experienced this incredible joy. And so I would underline the words joy there. I would underline, and mine have underlined out of sight, and I would underline cleared of guilt. But when we refuse to forgive, when we refuse to do that, then it reveals a lack of appreciation for the grace and mercy that God has given to us. But it also reflects our capacity to love. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, who we remember and celebrate uh, his life and ministry tomorrow, here, here's what he said. He said, he who is devoid of power to forgive is devoid of the power of love. And it's true. So if we're growing in holy character, if we're growing to become those Christians who live out these core values, then we must be willing to forgive others. So I, I'm giving you action steps each week as I talk about these things. Here's the first one. It's do it today. Yeah, if there's someone that you need to forgive now, then do it now. Write this one down. You might be familiar with this passage. It's Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And then right beside it, put the words, get up. It's the story of Jesus talking about the one who comes to the altar and they're about to make their sacrifice in the temple and they remember that they have something, that someone has something against them. And he tells them, get up and go and make it right and then come back. And then come back. That's the first thing. If that's you today, somehow, today, tomorrow, this week, make it right. Go, get up and go to them. Here's the next action step. What if we all committed to be the first to seek forgiveness in relationships where we find conflict at times? That can be in the home, it can be at work, it can be at school, wherever it may be. What if we made that a priority? So I've got, a, I've got another look up scripture for you. It's in Romans, so go back over to Matthew and turn right, go a few, few books over and come to Romans chapter 12. And I'd like for you to follow along with me when you get to chapter 12. Come down to verses 17 and 18. 17 and 18. And here's what it says. Never, you might underline that word, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. That's the goal. Do all that you can. To live in peace with everyone. And doing all that you can means that we should be the first to do it. Be the first. So I would underline never. I would underline honorable. I would underline do all that you can. All that you can. So I've got to understand where my heart is if I'm going to live out this core value. But there's something else I have to do. I have to stop keeping list. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, last week we talked about grocery list. I got in a lot of trouble. I'm not going to talk about that today. Instead, I'm talking about a list of people or events that have caused us harm. And here's the reality. Most of us keep those lists for some period of time in our lives. We, we understand that. Here's what we've learned by living life. We've learned this, that friends aren't always friendly, right? Neighbors aren't always neighborly. Uh, co-workers, some co-workers never work and some bosses are always bossy. We, we've learned this, if you've lived life at all, you've learned this, that a promise made is not necessarily a promise kept. Uh, you've learned as you've lived life, some people have, they've discovered this, that just because someone has called your dad doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to act like a dad should. 
We've also discovered, some of us sadly, that while we may say yes at the altar, you can still say no in the marriage. I, I like what Max Lucato said about this. He, he tells the story of a man who was bitten by a dog. And he went to uh, see the, his doctor. And, and when the doctor came in and told him that the dog had rabies, the man took out a piece of paper and started writing out a list, began making a list. The doctor saw that and he wondered, what, what, what is he doing? He says, there's no need to make a will. This, this, this rabies can be cured. And the man said, he said, well, I'm not making a will. He says, I'm making a list of all the people that I want to bite. <laughs> yeah, we, we all have probably at some point had people in our lives that we would like to bite back, right? People that have done wrong to us. And we hold on to this list, written or unwritten, and we think, you know, one day, one day, one day. But Jesus knows that keeping a list isn't helpful. In fact, uh, it might give us some short-term satisfaction, but for the long term, it's not for our good. So if you're in Romans, move with me over a little bit to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. I want to take you to chapter 13. Now, as I say, 1 Corinthians 13, a lot of us think about that uh, that chapter is normally called, we call it the love chapter. It's talking about love. But did you know that that chapter also talks about list? Did you know that? So, so come to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. And here's what you're going to find. Love is patient and kind. We've heard that. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. We read this at marriages. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And look at this last one. It keeps no record of being wrong, wronged. I'd underline that as a reminder that I, I don't need to keep list. I just don't. And we say, but, but look, Jimmy, look what they did to me and look at all of the pain that they caused me. And then you ought to hear Jesus saying something like this. Yeah, but just look what I did for you and all of the pain that caused me. You know, holding on to it, keeping a list leads to bitterness which ultimately is going to overtake us if we don't learn to forgive. So if you have a list, erase it, give it to Jesus, tear it up, throw it in the trash. You say, well, Jimmy, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at forgiving. I, I've, I've forgiven people. Well, did you know there's a test you can take to find out if you've forgiven people? I want to give this test to you. It's got four parts to it. Let's see if you pass this. Here's the first one. Do I think about getting even? Do I, do I still think about that when I think about what they did to me? Well, write this down. Write down Proverbs 20, 22, and then beside it, write down, don't say it. <laughs> That's a good phrase, don't say it. Because here's what it's going to say. Don't say, I will get even for this wrong. Just don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say it. Wait for the Lord. If, if there's some getting even, he's the one that'll do that, not you not you. So do I still think about getting even? Because forgiveness requires me to surrender my right to get even if I'm truly going to forgive. But here's the second one. What do I think about when I think about them? What's the first thought that comes to mind? Is it a positive thought? Is it a negative thought? You say, well, Jimmy, I don't have any thoughts about them at all. Well, listen, if that's you, you probably have not forgiven them. So write this down. Some of you remember the teaching we did a while back from Ephesians 4, 26, and 27. Write this down. Not today, Satan. Write that down if you would. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. That didn't say not today, Satan. That says not today, Saban. <laughs> well, I got to have a shout out for my Georgia Bulldogs, right? Come on. National championship. <laughs> Not today, Satan. That's what the scripture basically will tell us. That if we hold on, if we're still angry, if you're still mad that the Georgia Bulldogs won, listen, that's anger and you need to let it go. In fact, that scripture will tell you something like this. That if you hold on to it, you're giving Satan a foothold. So, what's your first thought? Here's the third one. Would I be willing to help them if they were in need? 
Now that sounds like something Jesus says. Feed your enemies. Treat them. Get, go, go to them and help them. Would I be willing to do that? Proverbs, write this one down. Proverbs 17, 9. And I like that I put this phrase here. Stop living there. Proverbs 17, 9. If you read it, you're going to see something like this. It says like, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. But then it says, but dwelling on it, living there, causes separation. Continues to cause separation. Now, now don't misunderstand me. Forgiveness takes time. And forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting, right? Because we're human. And here's what we know from a human level. That if we, that, that, that if it's virtually impossible for us to forget. It's like the harder we try to forget, the more we remember it. But with Christ's help, here's what we can do. We can detoxify the memory. We can take the poison out of it. That poison that really is poisoning our souls. So someone asked, does the size of the offense, does that impact the choice to forgive? In other words, if it's a really, really bad offense, do I still have to forgive him? The answer is it doesn't. It might affect the time it takes for you to forgive, but it shouldn't affect whether you should forgive. So how are you doing on the test so far? One more. Here's number four. Would I take satisfaction in knowing they failed? Under your breath, would you smirk or laugh or say, yes? If so, then you haven't forgiven. And, and you may not wish them to fail, but if you're okay if they did, then you probably haven't forgiven them. So write this one down. I like this one too. It's Romans 12, 14. We were there close to it a minute ago. And look what it says, bless their heart. Now, that's a good southern phrase, right? But we use it the wrong way sometimes because that's not the, the uh, connotation of this passage. Here's the passage. It says, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. When you start praying like that for those who've harmed you, let me tell you that you have moved into true forgiveness. Well, would you pass that test? Forgiveness is premised on grace giving someone what they don't deserve. And that's what we've received from our Father in heaven. So here's your next two action steps. First one is this. Just tear up the list that you've been keeping. Just tear it up. Here's what you want to do. You want to write down Leviticus 18, 19. You can just abbreviate that L-E-V, period, 18, 19. And write down no bears, no bears. Because it's going to say don't seek revenge. Don't bear a grudge against others, but love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. I got to tear up that list. But here's, here's the next one that we thought really needed to be part of this message today. And that's that we be willing to forgive ourselves. Some people can forgive others, but they have a hard time forgiving themselves. And I, I, if that's you, I want to encourage you to do that because you can. You can. For the harm you caused or the guilt you're still carrying, maybe for not forgiving. Look with me. You remember we, we were in Psalm 32? I want to go back to that. It's our last passage for this morning. Psalm 32, where David was talking about his sin. And when I go back to verse 5, and I want you to see what he said again. He says, Psalm 32, verse 5, he says, Finally, I confessed my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And look what it says. And you forgave me. Here's the best part. All my guilt is gone. All my guilt is gone. You can forgive yourself. You can. Because of the goodness of God and his forgiveness of us. So maybe there's someone here today still carrying that guilt for what you've done at some point in your life. All of us have carried it at some point. And, and maybe you haven't experienced the joy that David talked about for those the Lord has cleared their record of guilt. 
And, and so I want to pray for us as we close this morning. I want to pray for you and for all of us who struggle with forgiveness because all of us do at times. So would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Father, thank you first for your word, for the truth. It's sometimes when we hear it, it's hard. But you know it's for our good. So thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Your word also tells us that your love never fails and that you're, you're always willing to cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we turn to you and confess our sin. And that when we do that, our record is white clean and our guilt is gone. But there may be some of us here, Lord, who are still carrying that guilt. And so I, I would ask, Lord, that you would encourage them to confess that sin and simply just to tell you that they're sorry right now in this moment and to ask you to forgive them because you will. For those of us, God, who continue to struggle to forgive others, would you help us to tear up the list? Would you help us to fully forgive? And for those who just aren't there yet because maybe the timing's not right, would you put it in their heart to want to forgive? Because I know they really do. So help us, God, to remember what you've done for us and continue to do for us that allows us to be forgiven and free from the guilt. But also help us to remember what it cost you for that to happen and to always be thankful. So thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Amen. final hymn is Help Us Accept Each, help us accept each Other that we will um, go be the people that God intended us to be in our own lives and certainly as we deal with others. We're going to sing this to the tune of the church's one foundation. So you know that tune, so we're going to sing these words to that tune. So would you stand and uh, join us as we sing? <laughs> It's so good to have the love of God that is always there for us. And that's the love that he intends for us to share with others. And so go into the world this week forgiven, set free, and let your love overflow so that others will be drawn to him and feel that same love. Go in peace. We love you guys. See you next week. Amen.